What's going on, YouTube? This big pouncer coming at you again with a nut. I'm out here on the property today. It's our steel hunting property that we we bought, me and my daddy and my brother, a few years ago. Just out here and getting everything ready, ready for dare season. You know, it's gonna be here before you know it. It's already the end of June. And July will zip by like it ain't even there. We've got another month and a half, really. And it'll be time for us to start hunting. I got a little corn I'm going to throw out and, and I'll check on the stands and whatnot and see how everything looks. I'm going to bring you along and show you what we got. Stand by. Now this is this is one of our stand locations here. It's on this big power line. We got 16 acres over here and it goes it goes from the corner of that yard right there all the way down not to that set of poles but that second set of poles down there is just this side of that second set of poles probably about i'd say about 60 70 yards or so on this side of that set of poles down there it's a big you know rectangular shape it goes all the way down it's a pretty good little piece of property we got here you know it's we've killed a few deer on it killed some bucks we had one big one last year kept getting away from us Every time we'd go do a man drive, he'd slip out on us as soon as we'd get here. And uh, he, he was smart. Yeah, well, it wasn't nobody but me and Daddy most of the time come to do a drive, and that didn't help none. We would try to try to cut him off at a different spot every time, and he'd slip out on us every time. We'd see the track where he hit the road, and he was a good buck. I, got, I think I got him on camera at one time last year, and he was a good eight point. But uh, I'm going to say that's the same day anyway. But this is one of our stands here. We got up yonder. I love that stand. I've done killed a lot of day out of that thing. A lots of day out of that stand. Beautiful. You know, the power line company comes through here all the time, about every three years or so, and they cut this thing. It was Oh, yeah, well, you couldn't even see down this light line last year. It was real high. Yeah, there was there was 15-foot trees on that end on, over there in that little bottom right yonder. There wasn't no way you was getting in here. I mean, you could see into the corn piling off, but, you know, they done bush hogged it now. So it's wide open. I'll be able to shoot all the way to the end of my property line now. It's a little out of the stand view in the, on the power line stand here. Can't quite see all the way to the end of the property there. Got a couple limbs in the way. I might have to get out and trim them up before too long. But that right yonder is where the corn pile's at. Uh, it's probably 80, maybe 80 yards or so. I took the weed eater out and then I cut that grass from around it. That thing was tall. It, that grass grew up quick after we got all that rain. And uh, I trimmed it up with the weed eater from my corn piles at. So you'll be able to see the deer come out. Probably gonna end up putting another corn pile out right over yonder at about 140 yards, I think is what I marked it at last time I was out here. I'm gonna have two corn piles out on this power line here. And uh, you know, that 270 I got, it'll reach out there and get them. But this is where I've killed all the dead that I've killed on this property since we bought it. I've killed them right here in this, in this power line here. I had them, they was, they'd get come out that little opening right there. There's a big old trail right there. They'll come out there and walk across the light line and go on to the other side over there. Down to some there's some agricultural fields over there. They had peanuts out there every time we've, you know, all the years we've had it. Now there've been peanuts over there every year, and they, uh, them there would go over there late in the evening. So I'd catch them about eight o'clock or so. They'd be moseying on through here, and then I kill the buck. Not this past season, but season before opening day, kill the buck out this stand. And, he was walking his little butt right across there, there, and I popped him when he got right there, and he didn't make it to right there. And he was done. All right, let's get some corn slung out here. 
All right, now this here is my, this is my corn pile site, and I'm gonna show you here in a second my mineral lick site. There's my mineral lick right yonder. Got some corn I'm gonna throw out. This is why I like to put out them old brown mineral licks. You know, that was a 50 pound block about a month ago. There might be five, 10 pounds, man, maybe seven, eight pounds of it left. But you know, a lot of that goes into the dirt and then the deer come through and eat the dirt. And that is a hole that they have dug in the ground eating that dirt. Now I keep salt block out of there. I put a salt block out of there ever since we bought the place. And now, uh, you know, once salt's gone, I fresh, I put a new one out. But there's about this deer tracks in there where they've been licking it, but they've been eating that dirt. And they love it, you know, they'll eat dirt either way to go to get minerals out of the ground. So, you know, I just put these blocks out here to keep them, keep them coming back, you know, keep them interested. Keep them having something to munch on if there ain't no corn out here or something. I'd kill a few day over just salt block. Them coming out here checking it out. All right, let's sling this current on the ground, put my camera up. All right, we got some of that Carolina gold out on the ground. You know, I put out a five gallon bucket full. You know, they'll eat it within a couple days. It ain't gonna last about two days and it'll be gone, but that's all right. You know, I ain't putting it out real heavy to them right now. I'm just maybe about one bucket full a week just to keep them interested. And then, you know, probably about the middle of next month, I'll start putting two five gallon buckets out a week, about once every three days. And that'll be what I do throughout the whole season. And, you know, when I put a bucket out the next afternoon, I come hunt. And, I mean, y'all can talk smack about me all you want. I don't care Yeah, about hunting over corn piles. That's just the way we've always done it. You know, Daddy didn't have a whole lot of money to buy all kinds of property and you know, buy tractors and, and stuff to plant food plots with. And, you know, we didn't have any property, really, that you could just hunt, you know, over scrapes or trails, anything like that. So, you know, we just had one little specific spot in bushes that was so dang thick that you couldn't hardly. It was really, we had permission to hunt the places that nobody else wanted to hunt because there just wasn't no way to see anything. You had to cut your path and put your corn pile out. It was the only way you'd get there to come to it. And see, that's just the way we've always hunted. And it's the same way it is. Hell, I'd love to have a tractor to be able to disc this power line up and plant something. I got, you know, a good two or three acres right here in this light line that I could put a pea patch or soybeans or something like that. There's a, a swamp bottom you know, right there. The first little bit there is a bottom. I don't know, you probably wouldn't be able to get a tractor into it, but you know, it is what it is. I'd love to be able to do that. But you gotta work with what you got. And if it's legal in your state, I say do it. Whether it's running dogs, putting corn out, baiting up of any kind, you know, do it. If you don't want to, well, then that's on you. I just take advantages of all the opportunities that are laid before me. All right, we're going to get back there and put one more corn pile out. I got another stand on the back side of the property here. We're going to put some corn out on it, check the stand, make sure ain't nothing need to be trimmed up. I'm going to stick the camera up on it, see what we got coming out to it. We'll touch base when we get back there. Made it over here to stand number two. Down to the bottom. Where the corn pile is gonna go. That my camera. We'll uh, stick it up and see what we got. Got brand new camouflage up around that old unit up there. That ought to be a pretty good spot. It'll be the first year we put the stand up right here. And we'll see how it do. All righty, got some fresh corn out with the camera up. I'll come back in about a week or so and freshen the corn up again. And I'll wait about two weeks and check the camera out, see what we got. Of course, it was bone barren when I come over here. I put corn out out here about a week ago and it was gone, but I didn't expect any less. All right, we're in the second stand here. That corn pile down yonder. Now that one ain't quite as far of a shot. I think that's 70 yards. 
Right about 70 yards down there to it. And that's fine. You know, plenty far enough away to where the deer won't see you come out. And we got this, we made this shooting rest. Me and a buddy of mine. You know, most of these newer stands now, they got that old flip up rest and I can't stand that thing. Don't come up to about halfway up your stomach and then you got the whole top of your body sticking out. So what we done was took some uh, conduit and cut it, took some some uh, hose clamps, clamped it on, and we got it extended out to the front, took another one and clamped it on up here. So it's good and sturdy. And you got it all the way around, so you got you know, up to about about you know where I normally hold the gun at to shoot is where I put it up at, and you got plenty of room in here. Thing ain't you know thing ain't touching your feet or or your knees or anything like that. You know, nice little two seater stand. You bring my youngin up here with me, and it should be ready to go. I can promise you one thing. It is hot. About as hot as two rats humping in a wool sock out here. I ain't quite done yet though. I got a little more, a couple of other things I got to do out here before I leave. And then I'll be ready to go to the house, get a little rest. Worked all day. Come out here and do all this stuff by yourself. Tends to get a little agitating at times, but that's all right. It's all worth it when the day of season starts to come in. You pop that first hole in a big old buck or a nanny or a cow horn, it don't matter, I don't care. I don't discriminate. If he's 100 pounds or bigger, he gets a hole put in him, one way or the other. Alrighty, but figured I'd bring you along, show you what I do, and, you know, keep my, keep my place in order over here and keep a little still hunting place. And, you know, we got a couple more work days at the dog club before too long. We got to get started on, but I think this will be a pretty good spot. As long as the deer don't walk up behind me. You know, I don't know exactly where the deer is coming from, but I don't think they're coming out behind me. I think they're coming out that swamp back there on the backside of the corn pile, but ain't but one way to find out. And we shall see when the season comes in. This is Big Pencil, and we will be back with another one soon.